Hi everyone, welcome back. So in this channel, we often talk about uh, camping, you know, off-grid boondock camping, and that's what we like to, what I love to do. And to get me to uh, be able to do that comfortably, I built this cargo trailer. So that's also part of the channel is this building of this cargo trailer. But I've got this crazy idea, and I think it might just work. So let's talk about it. So what I want to do is I want to take this cargo trailer and I want to add two feet on the back and I want to make it six inches wider on either side. So why? Why do I want to do this? Well, a couple reasons. First off, I want to be able to sleep this way in this cargo trailer. Second reason is I would like a little bit more length. Hey, why not just buy a seven foot trailer, like a seven by 10 or a seven by 12? Well, what happens is when you buy the seven foot trailer, the axles even longer. So your wheels stick out even further. And as you know, a lot of my camping that I do, it's down these narrow logging forestry roads. And I need the trailer to be as narrow as possible. Just in the last video, I don't know if you saw that, but oftentimes I had to squeeze it right around a tree and it was really tight. Uh, right now is a perfect width. I don't want my axle to be any wider than it is right now. So what I want to have happen is have my axle and then my trailer go out over top of my axle. Now to try and find a cargo trailer like that in a size like this is very difficult. Why make it longer? Well, I'd really, really like to get a wood stove in here. One of those little cubic mini wood stoves or something like that. I want to mount it up front. I'd like to get it up there, have a nice little chimney coming out. I think it'll be a beautiful little spot for it. But to do that, I need to expand the whole thing a little bit because I need more room. I can't jam it in as it is without burning the whole thing down. So now let's talk about what my plans are to give me the end result that I want. Okay, I'm gonna walk you through this, uh, my thinking anyways. Well, what I'm figuring on doing is just bump out the back section just where the, the sleeping area is. So that's about 60 inches wide, and I want to bring it out six inches. So maybe I might go seven inches because there's an inch wall there uh, between the outside and the inside. So that brings me out to right about here on my trailer wheel. So right about here, I'm going to bring it out to. And then here, I'm going to taper it in, taper it into this, this uh, wall brace right here. And so that's going to be tapered in, but it's going to come straight out of here tapered into there and then come straight back and then when it hits the back here I'd like this to come up almost like a 45 degree angle and then this to come out two feet so we're coming back straight two feet this 45 degree up and that's going to help me with my departure angle I don't want to have it so that I'm banging my trailer because it's way back here and it's hit on all the rocks and stuff so a problem that I can see happening is uh, now with all this extra weight on the back, my tongue weight is going to be too light. So what I'm doing is I'm going to move my axle back eight inches to a foot. I still haven't decided. I think so the first step, I think, in this process is going to be moving that axle back. Once the axle's back, I'll know how to build the box around the tire, you know, for the, for the side here. Now to do this, what I want is I want the bottom side, this 45 angle here to be checker plate. And the rest, I just picked up some, there's a good RV salvage place here. And what they do is they do warranty work on cargo trailers and other trailers. And so they've got a, a variety of off cut. So I picked up all the, the paneling. It's a little bit darker gray. I also grabbed some interior trim, like interior panels. And I grabbed a big window in the back here because I thought if I'm closing this in, what I would still like is to be able to look out the back of my trailer. Boy, that's a monster. So that's the window I got on the back. So that's a 40, 42 or 40 inch window. And that's gonna be mounted kind of right in the middle of the back of my trailer. And the, the good thing with this window is it's also a fire exit. It's an exit window. So it's got the handle and the whole thing opens up. Especially with having the wood stove in the front, you know you don't want to walk past it. If there was ever a fire, you could just pop open that window and climb out the back. 
So that's my thinking there. I also picked up an RV door. So an RV door, but it's got the curved top. I couldn't get a square one. They're very difficult to find apparently. But when you're going this far, what's the difference? A little bit more work. So to put that RV door in, it's a 28 inch wide door. And right now we've got a 34, I think, or 36 is my cargo trailer door. So that's got to be made a little bit smaller. And then the uh, RV door needs to be cut down too. But it's a nice new RV door. Let's get started on this. Okay, so I finished this up last night and it was so dark I didn't really give you a good shot of it. So that's it. We've got the brackets welded on there. And then inside here, I've moved the shock back. I just took the bracket, I actually just uh, moved it back about a foot. Well, it's exactly a foot. And then welded that in. So this is all good now. I still gotta put some insulation under here, but I'm gonna worry about that later. I'd like to get this framing done so I can figure that out first. Okay, so the inside, we're pretty close to being done. I've got the my box here, battery box moved, all the wires are disconnected. Uh, I just started stripping here just so I can see what the framing looks like up here, how I'm going to tie that in. Got a good idea up there what I'm going to do. I'm going to pop these windows out now and then pull off this sheeting. Okay, so here's our frame. It is 99% done. You can see there's the opening for the window, the side windows here. And then I've got one big window to go in the back here. You can see how I went up on like a 45 degree here at the bottom. So basically the trailer is still to 10 foot long and then the extra 22 inches or two feet, I just came up here at an angle, but it's still below the bed. So you're not going to see it below the bench. There's the opening for the wheel. I made it a little bigger for my bigger wheels. I just primed the frame. Just wanted to make sure I hit all the welds before I put the paneling on now. So now let's get the paneling on here and then it'll start to look like a trailer I think. So I picked up these panels from an RV salvage place. They were 70% off. You can see the scratches on the side. They got some scratches, a few little dents, but I'm going to put a lot more scratches on it so it's okay. Attaching them mostly through glue. So all my seams are glued and also any of my crossbars, every single one of the, basically the supports, every support I glued so that it's stuck to it. And then I've just put in a few screws just where there was a little bit of a bulge or to hold the panel up. Up top, I'm just using that RV um, corner trim. And then up front here, I've just got some checker plate because I figured that'll take a lot of abuse there. I haven't cut my wheel well out yet. I'll do that because I want to match my fender profile. So I'm going to use the fender to do that and I'll do that later. And then I'll uh, put some tin inside there. So this side's done. Now I'm just moving on to this side here. You can just see here what I mean. So each one of these cross braces are glued. And this panel is hanging here just on its own. There's no, there's no screws in it. This is what I'm doing just for the overlap. So I'm overlapping it half an inch, putting some sealant here. And then this tape is just basically to prevent the sealant getting on the other panel. And then I'll just do the exact same thing here as I did to the other side. So here's the sealant I'm using. It's rated for aluminum and steel. Okay, It's all done, wrapped up. All the sheeting's on it. None of the holes are cut into it yet for the lights or windows or anything like that. But what I want to do now is I want to get started on my door. Okay, so here's the used door that I picked up. So this door right now is a little over six feet and I need to cut it down to just a little bit over five feet. Our door is cut down now. You can see it's not too bad. Looks all right. It's sure short though from here to the handle, but whatever. It'll be easier to open when you're on the ground. So now what we need to do is frame in, like rough frame in our uh, cargo trailer. 
So I just wanted to show you what I was doing here. So this is the wheel well, obviously. And so what I think I'm going to do here is just put a solid piece of metal across here, like this, uh, this aluminum sheet, right across there. And then I'm going to put my wheel well in here, in here. And then I'm going to caulk both sides of my wheel well. And I'm going to also um, seal in here, just put a piece of plate underneath there. So that way this whole thing will be sealed like this, like that. finished product you can see so I came out seven inches on either side Actually, and then I extended the fenders there's put my windows in here's the big back window and then 45 diamond plated my RV door So lots of room. I think we got room for two water tanks in here. And here we are back where we started. So that's it. We're going to wrap this video up. That's what I did anyways to give me a little more space inside. Stay tuned for part two when we do the inside. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.